Today we're gonna to be taking a look at and installing the 60 amp lead time MPPT charge controller. And I'm gonna be using this to complement this new uh, power station that I have set up in my shop um, for more solar applications. So we're gonna take this out of the box and uh, get it installed. I'm gonna show you folks how to, how to wire it up. And uh, we'll take a look at it. Now this is the Bluetooth model, which I definitely wanted because I like being able to log into my phone when I'm not in the shop to see what's going on. But this is good for either a 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery. It's got a couple of the, the setup modes that you can do directly from the charge controller, but I'm hoping that we can do it from the app because they're typically a little bit easier, but we'll check that out once we get there. And this also does have different settings for different type of batteries, either a lead acid, lithium iron phosphate. So you can go into the, the setup screen and actually set up different kinds of batteries because they're gonna take different kinds of voltages. So that's obviously a good thing. You got your QR code to download the app and let's go ahead and just get that done. And we wanna find the 60 amp charge controller and I already have it Okay, so it's the same app that, that I have for my Group 24 Bluetooth batteries. So that's good. I don't have to download another app. And in the box, you're going to get, let's see. You're going to get some mounting plates, some mounting brackets. It looks like some heat shrink wrap and some little uh, bolt, uh, drywall anchors if you're going to install this on the drywall. So I won't be using those. This looks like a temperature sensor and the actual unit it's pretty big guys it's pretty it's it's got some heft to it man you definitely need some anchors if you are going to be installing this on some drywall but but nice looking charge controller i know it doesn't really matter for looks but it's got that kind of soft touch uh coating on it you got your lcd screen up top huge heat sink I don't know if you guys can, can get a good look at that heat sink, but very, very big heat sink. And the ports in the bottom look like they're going to easily accept up to at least 10 gauge solar cables and battery leads and loads if you want to can, you know, connect like a 12 volt load. But your two PV cables are going to go on the far left, your battery cables are going to go in the middle, and your load, if you're going to use loads, are going to go on the far right. Then you've got your RS-45 uh, communication port over here on the right hand side and then your temperature sensor port over here on the left. So this particular charge controller, again, is either 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt, 60 amps, up to 150 volts. Max input power is 900 watts at 12 volts, or 1800 watts at 24 volts, 2600 watts at 36 volts, and 3200 watts at 48 volts. So we're gonna get this installed somewhere over here, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to wire it up and we're gonna get a battery out, and I finally have some sun today, so we're gonna see if this thing will actually input juice into my battery. So I think where I'm gonna to try to mount this is gonna be right here on the side of my little cabinet here, and try to get this as level as I can. kind of hung up. And we're good. Before I get that hung up, let me kind of show you folks how I'm going to wire this thing because that might be a little bit beneficial. So the first thing we've got to do is create some some cables. And I got a couple of spare different types of cables here. This one actually has the MC4 connectors already on it, but I've got to terminate the ends. So these MC4 connectors are going to come directly out of my solar panel array that is that is coming out of this DC circuit breaker box. So we're going to hook these up to the solar panel array cable. And of course, this this is all dead. There is no juice coming into here. So I'm going to want to get some ferrules on the end of these to install in the bottom of this uh, charge controller. So we're going to split this wire, pull it apart just a little bit like that. And we're going to get some ferrules and hook them up to 
the PV input, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this piece of wire. I'm gonna install a couple of ferrules on this end and connect to the battery side of the charge controller. Then we'll actually either put some probably ring terminals on this to actually kind of hardwire it to the battery. You could put alligator clamps on it, whatever you want, but I'm, I'm probably gonna use ring terminals. This is 12 gauge wire, so we're going to use the gray ferrule. Which if you don't know what a ferrule is, that's a ferrule. Get that installed on the end. Use the crimper that came in the tool. And we're good to go. And same for this guy. All right. So now I've got my two ferrules on my on the end of this cable, and we're going to put it into the charge controller. Now you always want to connect your battery to the charge controller first. You never want to connect your solar to the charge controller without the charge controller having a way to output all of that solar input. So I'm not gonna connect these solar panels first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build the, the battery cable first so I can get this hooked up to a battery. Then I'm gonna come in and hook up the solar cables to the charge controller. So this is a little bit thicker wire. This is 10 gauge. So we're gonna use the yellow ferrules on the 10 gauge wire. These ferrules just slip right over the exposed wire. You can get your crimper. And that creates a really nice end for these cables. There you go. Now for this end, I'm going to use ring terminals. And these actually have the heat shrink on the end. So this is what I'm gonna to use to connect to the battery. And I'm gonna put a bit of heat shrink over this tube, right where the, where, where the split ends, because I don't want it to, to keep splitting. So I'm gonna give myself enough room, and then we're gonna heat this heat shrink up so that the wire can't split past it. There we go. Get those crimped down. and these will go to the battery out of the charge controller. Okay, so this middle section right here, these middle two terminals are for the battery. So I'm gonna loosen, open up these clamps. And we're gonna install these ferrules on this battery cable that I made. So obviously negative goes to negative, positive goes to positive. And those fit in there just like that. Tighten them down. Okay, so now this end will go to whatever you're gonna be charging, whatever battery you're going to be using to charge. I'm going to install the solar cable ends on this side, just like I did these, but I'm gonna do it over here on the, on the cabinet and it's gonna be hard to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed as well now. Negative to negative, and I almost did that wrong. Negative to negative, positive to positive. Okay, now my, I still have this thing cut off, so it is not accepting any solar, which again, you don't want until you have a battery hooked up. So I'm gonna go pick a battery that is, I know, discharged, and we're gonna hook this up to the battery, and then uh, 
We'll take a look at the screen and then the app to see if we can set up any of the parameters, the charging parameters directly from the app. Okay, found a battery that I know needs to get topped off. This is just a 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery, uh, the DJL Alphabet Soup battery, but uh, it's not sitting at full charge. So I'm gonna take the cable that I made coming out of the battery terminals with these ring terminals, hook them up to the battery, and then uh, we'll get the, the charge controller actually turned on when I turn on this uh, DC circuit switch that's going to my solar array. So to do that, Okay, now let's check the voltage of this battery. If I can get these clamps on them. Okay, we're sitting at 13.28 volts on that battery. So you can see my charge controller did light on. It is detecting battery, 13.2 volts. 13.28 volts, close enough. Let's get my solar turned on. and it's going to start blinking. There we go. So it is detecting solar. You can see that it is inputting now, hopefully. But let me get the app up so you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. Okay, so I've got the, the lead time app up. I've scanned for the Bluetooth device. It did come up, so we're gonna click on this. Connecting. Enter the serial number of the device. The sticker with the serial number can be found either on the device or the packaging box. Okay, confirm. Invalid serial number. Let's try again. Confirm. Invalid serial number. Are you kidding me? Let's see if that worked. Confirm. Invalid serial number. Okay, so I finally got it connected. Couple of things. I was in the wrong app. Uh, you have to be in the lead time solar app. Then I had to actually disconnect it from the battery reconnect the battery to the charge controller to kind of reset everything. Then the charge controller finally showed up in the Bluetooth list of available options for me to pick. So now we're here. So now it's showing that my battery is at 13.6 volts. But let's make sure that that is true. My other multimeter just died on me. 13.55, so fairly close. Now let's go into the app here and see what all we can change. Parameter settings, battery type, lithium. Let's see what all we can do. Confirm to unlock battery type. You got flooded, sealed, user, lithium, gel. So yeah, we're gonna go into lithium. The boost charge voltage is 14.4. Over discharge, reconnect is 12.4. Over discharge, disconnect is 10.8. Um, and it doesn't look like, okay, so you can change this. So you can change your boost charge I'm gonna put mine to 14.6 and confirm. And I'm gonna leave everything else the same. Hit confirm. We'll go back to real-time monitoring. And you can see my voltage. I'm inputting 60.3 60 volts. It's fairly early in the morning. Currently at 15.51 amps, 13.6 volts. Uh, inputting 210 watts of power. So I've roughly have 15 and a half amps or 211 watts coming from my solar array in the backyard going into this battery. I don't have my load. I'm, I don't have anything connected coming out of the load. Uh, so, and what's cool is you can go in here to this historical data and I just, I just cut it on. So it's not going to have much. So you can come in here and, and look weekly how much solar you're able to get into that battery. It's going to give you quite a bit of information. If you want it, your lowest battery bank voltage, your highest voltage, your max charge you were able to get during that, that week or day your cumulative daily discharge amount. So some pretty good stuff there. Let's go back in here into real-time monitoring. So again, this is showing roughly at 15 and a half amps. I'm getting 210 watts and 15 and a half amps. That shows up 15 point, well, it's gonna fluctuate, but right around 15 amps. So the app seems to be pretty accurate. But the only thing you got to keep in mind, guys, this is a Bluetooth connection. So you can't be 
three blocks away and pull up this app to monitor your charge controller. You have to be within Bluetooth range for this to work. It would be awesome if this had a Wi-Fi feature on it, but then it would be way more expensive. But if, if you're out of town and you want to check your charge controller, this isn't going to work because it's just a Bluetooth um, feature. So you have to be within that Bluetooth range for the app to connect to this charge controller. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice um, little charge controller. Again, up to 60 amps, and it's going to charge anywhere from a 12 to a 52 volt battery. So you got a pretty wide range of batteries that you can use this charge controller with. And uh, yeah. So I think what I'm gonna end up using this charge controller for, guys, is, is all of my batteries that I get to review. I'm just gonna use my solar outside to charge up these batteries instead of using home grid to charge them up. I don't see a point in wasting money when I've got solar now um, to be able to charge these things up without me having to pay extra money for it. So this is probably gonna take a while, at least right now, I'm only getting you know 204 watts input, but it's like around 9 a.m. in the morning, so I'm not surprised by that number, but overall, um, I think this is, this is how I'm going to use this charge controller, uh, is to charge up my, all of my LiPo 4 batteries that I get. But this is really just to show you guys how to hook up and wire your battery bank or your battery array, whatever you want to call it, to your charge controller and, uh, be able to, to harvest the sun, guys. It's, it's free energy once you buy the equipment, of course. I don't like it when people say it's free energy because it's not free. You got to buy this equipment. But after you, after you do that and you, know, you eventually will recoup your money um, once you start using it and actually being able to harvest that sun energy. So uh, gang, I'll leave a link for all of the stuff, even some of the wiring tools that I use to, to hook this up. I'll leave it down in the video description below. That's about it, guys. Take care. Have a good one. See you soon.